will deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please wave those hands to our Father in heaven and just bring the love on him this morning. Just wave those hands to him right now because he's a good God. There's no other God like him. Open up your mouth and just bring the blessing for his faithfulness over your life, for his mercy, for sparing you and I. Thank you, Father. Lord, we're blessing him. So real quick, we're going to be doing some old songs this morning. So we want us to sing together. Amen. Amen. So before we do that, I want us to just clap like this. Everybody, let's go. You can do better. Let's go, let's go. Say, blessings and honor, glory and power. You say, be to be in set from day. Everybody raise a voice and say,
Acknowledge the name of the Most High God, the Everlasting Father, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Ancient of Days, the Land of the Tribe of Judah, the I am that I am, 
the one that started a journey with you and is not yet finished with you. Father, Lord, we thank you. Let's bless his name. Let's bless the name of the Most High God, the Ancient of Days, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, the faithful God who has always shown up for you in every situation and circumstances. The one that is by his grace has kept you to see this glorious and wonderful day. Not everybody that started last week is alive to see this day. He's a faithful God. Thank him and bless him for his faithfulness upon your life. Thank him for finding you worthy to be alive to see the glory of another day. Thank him for the provisions in the last one week. Thank him for his safety, for his protection, for his preservation. Bless his name. Honor him. Exalt him. He's the unlimited God. Thank you, Father. Father, Lord, we say thank you. Daddy, we bless your name. Thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness. Thank you, Lord, for your grace upon our life. Thank you, Lord, because it's by your mercy that we are not consumed. What more can we say this morning, Lord? But Daddy, we say thank you. Daddy, we bless your name. Daddy, we honor you. Daddy, we exalt you. I set our thanks this morning. I worship, Lord, we pray that you accept it in honor and glory of your name. For in Jesus' mighty name we are prayed. For in Jesus' mighty name we are prayed. The Almighty Father will show forth for you this morning in the name of Jesus. He will arise for you in the mighty name of Jesus. He's a faithful God. He will keep his own paths of his covenant concerning you in the mighty name of Jesus. In every area that you have been disappointed, he will arise for you this morning in the name of Jesus. No more disappointment in your life. No more shame in your life. No more failures in your life in the name of Jesus. No more sickness in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. No more going back in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. You shall continually go forward. You will move forward in every area of your lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Whatever you lay your hand to do, the Almighty Father will bless it in the name of Jesus. As his word will come forth this morning, the word will touch you. It will touch your situation. It will touch those challenges in your life. It will move the mountains in your life this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. And you will not go back home the way you come this morning, but you will go home rejoicing, fulfilled, blessed, lifted up in the mighty name of Jesus. For in Jesus' mighty name we are prayed. For in Jesus' mighty name we are prayed. Let somebody shout hallelujah. Let's give a clapping offering to the covenant voices for the powerful ministration this morning. Let's bless the name of the Lord concerning their lives. My prayer for you is that seasons of celebration will not cease in your life. Our Father has declared concerning us in this new year that it shall be a year of jubilation. And so shall it be in the name of Jesus. I don't know what you have been waiting for. And it seems as if it will not come. In this new year, it will come in the name of Jesus. It will be manifested upon you in the name of Jesus. For in Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. I want to bless the name of the Lord for the opportunity to be a vessel of honor unto you. I want to thank our pastor, Pastor Shegumbawo, for giving me another opportunity. My prayer is that, Lord, we use me for his glory, that every word that we proceed out of my mouth this morning will be filled with power from heaven in the mighty name of Jesus. And it will meet you at the point of your need in the mighty name of Jesus. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. To go into this morning's sermon, I'd like us to take this praise worship song. My trust is in you. My trust. My trust is in Lion you. Of Judah, my trust is in you. Ancient of days, my trust.
is that every of our trust in him this morning will not be cut short in the name of Jesus. Praise God. Before we have our seat, let us take our Bible affirmation. Before we have our seat, let's take our Bible affirmation. And we all read together and declare that this is my Bible. I have what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. I'm about to receive the incorruptible, indestructible, eternal seed of the word of God. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I will never be the same again. Never, never, never. I will never be the same again in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray that at the end of this world, you will never be the same again. That it will renew you. It will transform you in the mighty name of Jesus. Let somebody shout hallelujah. You can have your seat, and as you are doing so, you can welcome your neighbors and say, God, we'll meet them at the point of their need this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. God, we meet you at the point of your need this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. God bless you all in the name of Jesus. Once again, I have the grace and the pleasure to bring you this morning's sermon, and it is tied to what is your priority? What is your priority? Praise God. Our Bible text will be taken from the book of Luke, chapter 12, reading from verse 22 to 24. Then from verse, then I don't really read verse 34 too, of the same book of Luke, chapter 12. Book, Luke, chapter 12, verse 22, reading to 24. Luke, chapter 12, verse 22, reading to 24. And then verse 34. Verse 22 says, And he said unto his disciples, Therefore I say unto you, Take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat, neither for the body, what ye shall put on. Verse 23, no, verse 23, verse 23 before we go to verse 24. He said, the life is much more than meat, and the body is more than raiment. Verse 24. Consider the ravens, for they neither sow nor reap, which neither have storehouse nor barns. And God feedeth them. How much more are ye better than the fowls? Praise God. Verse 34 now. Verse 34 says, For where your treasure is, there will your heart also be. I pray that God will bless the reading of his word this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. So once again, you say, What is your priority? What is priority? The definition of priority makes me to understand that it's a fact or condition or being regarded or treated as more important than others. That is your priority. Something much more important. Now, there's a difference between your priority and your goals. And I know that we set goals and objectives either in your business, either at the beginning of the year. I mean, if you go to school, I mean, whatever you find yourself doing, you want to set goals. The difference between priority and goal is that goal is the object of your ambition or effort or aim or a desired result. So, but what priority is that you now have goals. You may have a different goals for the year. You may have a different goals or objectives for your business. But there must be one that must be the number one goal, your top goal. That's your number one goal or your top goal is your priority. The most important thing to you. So as a human being, you ask yourself, what is the most important thing to me in life? What is the most important? What is my top goal? What is my top objective? The truth of the matter is we, we have one goal or objective. In fact, there must be reasons why we are here this morning. There must be goals and objectives. It may be different from the person sitting next to you. But is that probably there is something that is burning in your heart that probably as you come this morning, you say, God, just meet me at this point this morning. And I give you all the glory. 
And my prayer is that God will meet you at that point this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. So the third matter is we need to set our priorities within our goals and objectives. We need to say, oh, this is my priority out of all these goals. But the third matter too is that in setting your goals and objectives, there are a lot of things that are competing for your space and the little time that you have. Praise God. So no matter what you think, one of the most precious things in life is time. Time is so precious that before you can say, Jack, you know, if you don't set the right goals and the, your, your, your priority right, you just discover that time has elapsed. The truth of the matter is the Yoruba has a saying. They will say, ah, Roger Mu Solokun. That is, we don't have a rope to tie the time, to delay the time, to delay the days. There's nothing you will do. You know, whether you are in church or not today, 12 p.m. will come. Whether you are here or not, 6 p.m. will come. Whether you set the right priorities or not, 12 minutes will come. Before you know it, we, the, the day 21st of August is gone, and then you have 22nd of August. One of the things that I try to do lately, and I tell people, is that no matter what you are going through, no matter the challenges, if you don't maximize the benefits of today, even if there are challenges and you decide not to be happy, the truth of the matter is you and I, in our lifetime, we will never live to see the 21st of August that is today again. So you decide on how you want to spend the 21st of August. Do you want to spend that tomorrow you are regretting that if I had I know? And you know, worries will not take away some certain things. That's another thing that I've learned. You know, sometimes some people will say, ah, this problem, this problem. See, the problem will come, it will go. The day will come and it will go. It's not as if one is not trying to put solutions into those problems. Praise God. So, with the competitions that we want to do at the same time, the truth of the matter is that we can objectively only concentrate, concentrate on doing one thing at a time. And I can give you an example. Okay, that was a particular day. On a Sunday evening, I have three invitations. One of them was that, okay, I need to attend as fellowship. The other one was my blood sister was having a party. Then I have another friend that was having a party. And it was at the same time. So I need to set my priority and which one will I attend? Because the truth of the matter is, there is no way I can make the three of them. So which one is much more important to me? You know, and in verse 34 of Luke 12, we said that wherever your treasure is, there will your heart be. So you have to, I mean, I have to take a decision. Except if I decide that I'm not going. But if I have to go to any one of them, I must take a decision. And that's how we face challenges every day. And that's why we need to set our priorities. And say, oh, this is my top goal. So if there is that case, you need to set your priorities. And you, when you set it, what it means is that you are going to channel your priority or your energies towards the decision that you have taken. And you have taken it, you know, you abide with it. So we have different top goals for a student. Your goal is to come out with an excellent result. For somebody that is trusting for the fruit of the womb, you know his priority. And you know where he or she will channel, he or she will channel um, he, he or her energy. Because it's the man and the woman that are waiting and trusting God for fruitfulness. If you are looking for a job, you know where you put your energy. Wherever you find yourself, you have a top goal. You have a top goal. For some of us, it's like one of our top goals is to, be, to, be, to prosper, is to be blessed. There's hardly anybody that will say, no matter what, I want to be blessed. Praise God. So no matter how good these goals are, what it means is that they are all earthly goals. They are all earthly goals. You know what? what all of these goals, top goals and priorities, have to do with here and now and the life that we want to have here. So no matter what, no matter what your goal is, it's all about what you want to achieve. It's all about what maybe satisfies your flesh. But... What should be our top priority? What should be our number one priority? Let us take out the advice given to us in the book of Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. What does he say? That should be our top goal. He said, but seek ye first the kingdom of God. That is the number one thing. That is the number one thing. God is not saying that you don't have any other goals or priorities. But he said, seek ye first the kingdom of God. And he said, it's righteousness. Then he now said, what will happen to all the other goals that you have set for yourself? And he said, all these things, all of them, he didn't leave out one. All that you require, all that is needed. He said, they shall be what? They shall be added unto you. My prayer for you is that you have an understanding that you set first all your priorities towards seeking the kingdom. 
and his righteousness. And every other thing that you needed shall be added unto you in the mighty name of Jesus. So seeking first the thing that matters to us is to which way. So I said, what do you need to get your priorities right? What do you need to get the number one priority for your life? Number one, you need to know God. And how can you know God? It's through the word of God. It's through the word of God. So the number one thing that should be important to you or to your life is that you know the word of God. If you know God, you must know his word. Because the word of God in the book of John, chapter 1, verse 1, make us to understand that in the beginning was the word, and the word was his God, and the word was God. So what he says is that God, if you want to know God, you need to know the word of God. It is through knowing the word of God that you can know God, that you can know the purpose and the plans of God for your life. Let somebody shout hallelujah. So to know him, you need to know the word. If you know the word, you will know him. And that is how you can know him, is through this word. It is through his word that you can know his plan and his purpose for you. It is through his word that you can know and have an understanding that living this life is beyond the earthly benefits and gains of this world. You know, no matter what you gain, the world will pass away. One of the things that will not pass away surely is the word of God. And you know, most of the things that we gather, you have to say they are vanity upon vanity. Praise God. Praise God. So the book of John chapter 6, verse 63, too, it makes us to understand the power in the word of God and why you need to have an understanding and to know the word of God. You know, for most of us, we are running at task sketter. And maybe what you need to do is that just arm yourself with the word of God. Why do you need to do so? Because I'm here to understand that the word of God is not only quick, it's powerful. So you are looking for short corner, short cuts, to blessings. Study the word of God. Because the word of God is quick. Not only that, he says it's power, powerful. You are facing challenges against your enemies. And you are looking for somebody to help you. The better place for you to run to is to run to God. And he will deliver you. And he will rise up for you in the mighty name of Jesus. So, the reason that you need to equally prioritize your top goal in, in the word of God is because he said, whatever you put in this world shall pass away. But surely, war will not pass away. He said his word shall not pass away. That's why let's, let's take a look at the book of Matthew chapter 24 verse 35. Matthew chapter 24 verse 35. It says, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. That is, whatever you achieve, whatever you have put together in this world, they will pass away. But surely what will not pass away is the word of God. In the book of 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 19, 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 19, it says that the foundation of God standeth sure. Praise God. And having this seal, he said, that is the foundation of the word of God. What he's saying that the foundation is the word of God. And that the word of God does what? It standeth sure. I pray that the word of God will give you a solid foundation this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. So the surest foundation that you can prioritize your life on is on the word of God. And not the things that give pleasure and comfort to your body. The word of God is unshakable. Praise God. And will not pass away. Neither will it be destroyed by the things of this world. That is why we are reminded in the book of 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, that you should study to show yourself, approve unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed. Rather than writing the word of God, the truth is in the word of God, and it will help you and guide you to live rightly above the desire of this world in the mighty name of Jesus. Number two, beyond the fact that you know the word of God, this is that most of us sometimes probably will know the word of God. Some of us are here and we hear the word of God. But the word of God will not work for you if you are not a doer of the word. The most important thing beyond knowing the word of God is that you must be a doer of the word. The book of James chapter 1, reading from verse 22 to 25, gives us an understanding of why you must be a doer of the word. James chapter 1 verse 22, reading to 25. Praise God. He said, but be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. I can give you an example. There are so many things that you want to do. And maybe it's something that we refer to as procrastination. Some of us even have goals and objectives. But for those goals to materialize and be manifested, we must take action. When you don't take action, they are just goals. They are just objectives. And on the paper. Some people will even put them, you know, in their office. They've set, set goals and objectives. 
The truth of the matter is, are they putting action into those goals? You give your boss, oh, sir, let us do this and do that. And the man says, okay, no problem. You run, it, you run it, but you cannot run it. So those goals cannot become realities. Praise God. Verse 23 says, For if any be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he said, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. Verse 24. He said, For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way, and straight away forgetteth what manner of man he was. Most of us, we come to church and we hear the word of God. But it's as if some people, as they are stepping out, it's like they remember not the word of God. You know, there are some things that will happen, maybe in church or when you go to camp, and you see some sins, obscene sins, happening immediately after service. Happening immediately after the Holy Ghost um, uh, prayer uh, programs. And you'll be asking yourself, are these Christians? There are some people that when you hear the words that comes out of their mouth, immediately you finish hearing the word of God. You will be questioned, you have to question as they are these Christians. Verse 25. He said, But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continue therein, in be not a forgetting fearer. But the doer of the work, he said and concluded that this man shall be blessed in his deed. I pray that as you become doer of the word, you will be surely blessed in your deeds in the mighty name of Jesus. I said you surely be blessed in the name of Jesus. The book of 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 10 make us to understand. 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 10. Why you must be a doer of the word. 2 Peter chapter 10. He says, Wherefore, dear rather brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, ye shall never fall. Another translation says that you will never stumble. If you are doer of the word, you cannot fall, neither can you stumble. The reason that most people are stumbling and failing is because they are not doing the word. They are not putting the word into practice in their lives. You can't say you are a Christian, you listen to the word, you study the word. Some people, can, they know the beginning of the Bible to the end. But you don't see the reflection of the word in their lives. And that's why you start to question their Christianity. And what the Bible is saying is that if you don't do these things, you will fail or stumble. I pray that will not be your portion in the mighty name of Jesus. I said that will not be your portion in the name of Jesus. So your practice is not only in knowing the word of God, but being the doer of those words in your daily life. And the word says that you will not stumble. And I pray you will not stumble in the name of Jesus. Because if you are a doer of the word, 1 Corinthians Chapter 4, verse 6, equally advise us that we need to exhort to be imitators, imitators of him. Imitators of who? Imitators of our Lord Jesus Christ. That if you imitate him, that through this imitation, you see the version of Christ being reflected in your life, reflected in your daily living, reflected in your business, reflected in your family, reflected in your children, in the mighty name of Jesus. I says you start to imitate Christ, and you will see him reflect in every area of your life in the mighty name of Jesus. So your priority is you need to put Christ first. You need to put God first. You need to put his word first. You need to be obedient to the word. And through the word of God, you begin to manifest great blessings upon your life. He has told you that you should seek him first. And all these other things that you are looking for shall be added unto you. I pray that as you become a doer of the word this morning, he will manifest his blessings upon your life. In the mighty name of Jesus. I say he will manifest his blessings upon your life in the name of Jesus. Finally, Romans chapter 12, verse 2, be doer of the word. It says, and be not conformed to this word. Because the challenge we have, some of us, even though we know the word, we are getting conformed to the things of the word. Most of us, what we do is that the latest thing that is raining, you know, whether it's in line with the word of God, is what we want to do. We want to sing like those people in the world. We want to behave like the people in the world. We want to dress like the people in the world. But he said, be ye transformed when you hear the word. By the renew of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. I pray that today you get your mind renewed in the mighty name of Jesus and you will not be transformed to the things of this world in the mighty name of Jesus. Number three, it is true faith and belief in the word of God. We say you are doer of the word. You believe in the word. But do you have faith in the word? Do you have faith in the word? You know, I used to remember in those early days that we go to camp, and you see some people, after they've been blessed with the word, but they are not satisfied, or maybe they are fit, they will move from camp. And in those days, it's like 
MFM usually have their own program, I think, Saturday morning. And as we are leaving camp on Friday, you see them driving into MFM to, to continue with, with what? With fire. If God has decreed blessings upon you, all you need to do is walk in faith with it. Jesus Christ will always tell you that by your faith, you are healed. By your, it is your faith. It is your faith that will make the word of God manifest upon your life. You need to believe. Your priority is that you must believe the word of God. It is lack of faith that makes us to prioritize all our thoughts differently. Praise God. The book of Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6, what is he talking about faith? Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6. He says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Praise God. He says you must believe, you must have faith, and you'll be rewarded diligently concerning all that you put in him in the name of Jesus. The book of Proverbs, chapter 3, verse 5 and 6, equally talking about putting your trust and having faith in the word of God. He says, trust in the Lord with all thy heart, and lean not unto thy own understanding. Praise God. He said, in all thy ways, acknowledge him. And he shall do what? He shall direct your paths. And lean not unto your own understanding so that he can direct your path. It is equally through faith that whatever you ask for from him, he will answer as long as it falls within the will of God and not to fulfill your own desire. The book of Matthew chapter 21 verse 22 says, 21 verse 22, too, if you can read that, and all things, whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer, believing, he said, ye shall receive. So, when you ask, you need to believe. You don't need to have that in mind. There are some people they will come to church. Their family member will still call them today. And say, maybe they should come and see one Baba or the other. That means you don't have faith. You don't believe in the word of God. And that's why it's not working for you. You need to have faith. You need to believe. You know, there's no other ways I can convince you. But through the testimonies that we hear. Through the testimonies that we hear. The last convention, I hear powerful testimonies on Thursdays and on Fridays. And I don't know which station you, you are. You find yourself this morning. Of course, what can come to my mind is that of the story of a lady that we learned about that she's 45 years old, works with an, uh, what's it called, a telecommunication company, has an own house somewhere in Osapa, London, but because of lack of faith and lack of belief, he committed suicide. Why did he commit suicide? The story says, if that is true, that because she's still single and she's not married. The question is, if we get married, who told you that there are no challenges there? Who told you that there won't be battles there? You need to go and ask husband and wife what they are managing, what they are going through. Eh? For some people too, in their marriage, they've gone into depression. They've gone into depression, and some people will say, for this reason or the other, they will not marry again. So the question is, where is your faith? Where is your belief? We have a story of a woman that said that she got married, maybe around that same age. And that she got married to a man who was in his 50s, who has never been married. But the third matter is, she got married. So why are you limiting yourself? Because you don't have faith in God. Because you don't believe that God will do that thing that you think that he can do. You yourself think that it's no longer possible. Because you are made to understand that with God, nothing shall be impossible. It's a God of possibility where you see me is impossible. I don't know what challenges you are going through. I don't know where you find yourself and you think it's not possible. You are waiting on the Lord for the foot of the womb. One of our sisters there waited for 19 years. I have the privilege to see her some days later. And I said, ah, Sister Hannah, he said, my hands are full. He said, my hands are full. And you can surely see that her hands are full. Because <laughs> coming to church, you know, she has to now wake up early. I pray that God will give you a good problem. In the mighty name of Jesus. You know, that situation, God will turn it around. It may be a problem, but it will be a good problem in the name of Jesus. You hear of somebody that waited for 28 years. 28 years. You know, there are some testimony. Before you give that testimony, already people are already clapping. When you see somebody coming out with triplets, uh, you know that you know, they, they, even if he does or he or she does have to say it, you can see the power of God. But when you hear that they've waited 20 years, 25 years, but they didn't allow their priority to change. 
The son of uh, Dickin, who probably is no longer here, and the wife too was giving a testimony. They waited, I think, for about eight years. He said, he got to a point, he didn't allow you to worry her. He just believed to trust God, and God answered her. Some of us, we allow our problem to weigh us down. And I can understand. I have been in some places before. And the understanding that I have now that I don't worry is because God that has done it in the past, he's still alive to do it today and tomorrow. And so shall it be in the mighty name of Jesus. Whatever you are waiting for, as long as you put your trust in him, God will answer you. God will arise for you in the mighty name of Jesus. In the book of Romans chapter 10, verse 11, have your trust in him. For the scripture said, whosoever believeth, believeth on me shall not be ashamed. My prayer for you is that as you put your trust in him and your faith and you put your priority in him as number one, he will not fail you in the name of Jesus. He will not put you to shame in the name of Jesus. Brethren, number four, what's your priority as an human being? The truth of the matter is we've said that this world is a passing face. We are here today. We will not be here tomorrow. So we are here but in our flesh. We are here but in our spirit. But you know we are made up of body, spirit, and soul. So you ask yourself, where will your soul be after this? Where will your soul be? You know, there are things that when I look through at this age, you know, there are people that I used to see around me, I see them no more. And there are people that are just coming up you know, that you know probably they will go to a certain age. Because you too, you have gone through that stage. This world is not our home. But there is a greater place that God is preparing for us. So your number one priority, he said you should seek ye the kingdom of God. So you need to place priority on how do you get to heaven. Eternal kingdom. The book of Matthew chapter 16 verse 16 says, Matthew 16, verse 16. Praise God. Matthew 16, verse 16. No, that's not what I'm asking for. Praise, praise God. Let me go ahead. Um, let's, take, let's look at the book of Psalm 145, verse 13. Verse 145, verse 13. It says that his kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. And Thy dominion endureth throughout all generations. This life, this world is not everlasting. It's temporal. But there is one that is everlasting. And that's the kingdom of God. And how do you get to that kingdom of God? So you need to place priorities on it. And with what we said, you need to know you be, um, the word of God. Be dwell of that word and put your trust in him. First Corinthians chapter 2 verse 9. First Corinthians chapter 2 verse 9 says, But as it is written... I had not seen, nor hear, hear. Neither have it entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that loved him, for them that obey him. Heaven cannot be described. No matter the description that I have given it, I strongly believe that it, is, it has not matched what heaven is. And that's why he says that I had not seen, nor hear, hear. Neither has it entered into the heart of man. We can only infer. We can only base it on what we have heard. But I'm sure that the glory, the blessings in heaven cannot be compared to what we can imagine. You know, our God is an unlimited God. And the best question I can give you, that in all of science has done and has achieved, the universe is a continuous void that no one knows its end. That gives you a picture of who God is. The best telescope that they've done Still says that there is an end that they don't know. Because it's like there's an end I see after an end. That is who God is. So that gives you a picture of what heaven will be. How glorious heaven will be. And it will be sad that after we've gone through pains in this life, that we'll miss heaven. I pray that shall not be your portion in the name of Jesus. I say that shall not be your portion in the name of Jesus. The book of Hebrews chapter 13 verse 14 says, For here we have no continuity." But we seek the one to come. He said, yeah, we have no continuous city. The best of what we have here is nothing to compare to the one that is coming. It's nothing to compare to heaven. And I pray that you and I, that as we put in our efforts, as we study the word, as we hear the word, as we obey, 
and put our faith in him, we will be partakers of eternal heaven in the name of Jesus. I say we will be partakers of a glorious heaven in the name of Jesus. Then the book of Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes chapter 2 verse 11. Ecclesiastes chapter 2 verse 11. He said, then I looked on all the works that my hand had wrought. In fact, you can say all that human beings has achieved and on the labor that I had labored to do. And behold, all was vanity and vexation of the spirit. And he said that what? There is no profit under the sun. When he says there is no profit under the sun, I don't know what you have achieved. I don't know how much weight you have garnered, you have gathered. He said there is no profit in them. There is no profit in them. You are the richest man in the world. He says there is no profit in them. In fact, for most of us, maybe because we don't have, there is lack. We lack understanding. If you see what the richest men are doing with their money, there are times you ask yourself question. Things only to satisfy the flesh. Things only to satisfy the flesh. But things that will not satisfy the soul. The truth of the matter is when you see rich men say some certain things, you will question the race you are running, the rat race that you are running to be rich. If a man can say shame to money with all that he has, because money cannot heal his sick wife. If the richest people in the world cannot salvage their marriages, they don't have peace. Because the truth of the matter is when I go for you know, when I go for lectures, seminars, you are made to understand that money does not give peace. Words don't give peace. But there is a greater joy. I was watching a documentary about a Chinese man who in his sixties was still involved in doing martial arts. And that has kept him healthy. And he said something, and his wife too corroborated that. His greatest joy has been the fact that he has been healthy. And the wife said that he believed that the greatest thing that God can give somebody is good health. Those are Chinese. He said it's good health. That is the greatest blessings. You know, sometimes, I don't know, maybe you'll be sick to the point that you'll be thinking that, God, <laughs> am I going or not? And that everything you have, you want to put it into that situation so that you can come out of it. The woman with the issue of blood for so many years, spent all that he has achieved, that he has put together. She spent all. So, but when he see Christ, when he touched the hem of his garment, he received healing. He received peace. His joy was full. I declare concerning somebody here this morning, I don't know how you've been struggling, hustling, but I pray that as you, as you look up to him this morning, you will receive help in the mighty name of Jesus. Your joy shall be full in the mighty name of Jesus. Finally, your priority is you must believe in Christ. You must believe in Jesus. You must believe in Jesus. Why must you believe in Jesus? Because we are made to understand that for you to come unto God, you have to do it through, through, through our Lord Jesus Christ. That's why in the book, and then our Lord told us emphatically, because we are all born sinners. But in the book of John chapter 3 verse 16, for out of his love, he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. The way to everlasting life is through Jesus Christ. The way for you to make heaven is through Jesus Christ. So you must believe in Christ. You must believe that he is and that he exists. Praise God. So, because we are born sinners, we need to be saved. And he sent his only begotten son so that we may be saved. He quickly said, and we are made to understand, that no one can come to the Father except through him. That's why we are made to understand in the book of John, chapter 14, verse 5 to 6, that is the way and the truth. And no one comes unto the Father but through our Lord Jesus Christ. You need to have a relationship with Christ. Because it's the way and it's the truth. The way to heaven. Your top priority is that you must put your trust in Christ. Praise God. The book of John chapter 3 verse 5 equally made us to understand when Jesus was asked 
And he answered, Say, very, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. So if you are not born again, he says you cannot enter the kingdom of God. If you don't have a relationship with him, you cannot enter the kingdom of God. If you are not publicly declare that you believe in our Lord Jesus Christ, he says you cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Our Lord has prayed the sacrifice for your sins. You are here this morning. I don't know the kind of sins you have committed in life. Our Lord gave Jesus Christ his only begotten son so that you may be saved. So that that sin, he has paid for it on the cross of Calvary. So you, you need to make Christ your top goal if you are a sinner. That's it or not mean that you still don't have goals. Goals for your job, goals for your family, goals for your head, goals for your friends. But then you need to have a relationship with him. You are here this morning. You hear all that I've said. I've talked about the word of God. I've talked about being the doer of the word. I've talked about faith. And I've talked that you need to make heaven. But you don't have a relationship with him. All that I've been saying is that probably you are living a wasted life. But God, our Lord Jesus Christ, has told us that come unto me, all you that labor, and I will do what? I will give you rest. Not only will you have rest here, but rest life after in the mighty name of Jesus. He says, cast thy body upon me, and I shall sustain thee. He says, I will not allow you to suffer, nor be moved. Brethren, if there is anyone amongst us this morning, I want to encourage you, and I ask each and every one of us to, to encourage them, that if you don't have a relationship with Christ, then you have not even started. Your priority is to be saved. And he said that he has paid the sacrifice so that you may be saved. So he's calling you out this morning to surrender your life to him so that your journey in life will be fruitful at the end of the day so that you can be partakers of eternal kingdom. Is there anyone in our midst this morning who does not have a relationship with Christ? Who does not have a relationship with him? Who does not know him? He's calling on to you this morning that come. He said, come. You need to come. You need to open your heart to him. You need to open your heart to him. Please, brethren, let's clap. God bless you, my sister. Is there any, anyone in our midst this morning? If you are in our midst, you fear the sermon. Beyond hearing the word of God. Beyond hearing, before hearing the word of God. Beyond hearing the word of God. God is saying, what does it profit you? If you gain the whole world and loses your soul. What is the profit? What is the profit? You know what matters? Most of us will not live to be 100 years. We will not live to be 100 years. So after the 100 years, what happens? What will it profit you? What will it profit you if you get the whole world and lose your soul? So brother, please, let's cast up in and encourage them. So you are here this morning. Another opportunity arises for you. To publicly declare and say, Lord, I accept you as my Lord and my Savior. Father, come and cleanse me. Forgive all my sins, Lord, so that I can, I too, can come into this glorious and wonderful family. Is anyone in that midst? The reason why you are struggling is because you don't have a relationship with him. Your top priority is to make heaven. Because this world will pass away. It is his world that will not pass away. Please, brethren, let's clap. If you are still struggling, I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you. Please take that step of faith. You know, you know today, you don't know tomorrow. And what we, what an opportunity for you so that you don't regret. Brethren, please let's keep on clapping. Let's keep on clapping and encourage them. I'm making the final declaration now. God is here and is ready to accept you as you are. And make you new and renew you and make you a new being. If you are here, this is the final charge to you this morning. I'm calling on you. I'm calling on you, accept him as your Lord and Savior, and you'll be amazed how we come into your situation. From now on, as you place your top priority in him, he says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these other things that you are struggling for shall be added unto you. Praise God. My sister, God bless you. I say congratulations to you. It's a dawn of a new day for you. 
and it will mark the beginning of new things for you in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Please, let us pray together and you declare with me. As I said, this was say, Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, I believe you as my Lord and Savior. Come into my life today. Have mercy on me and cleanse me of all my sins and make me whole in the name of Jesus. For in Jesus' mighty name we are praying. I decree upon your life that as you take this step, God will renew you. God will transform you. He will start doing new things in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. He will wipe away your tears in the mighty name of Jesus. All your fears, he will take them away in the name of Jesus. He has he said all things shall become new. All things are passed away. Everything that is old in your life, I condemn them to the pits of of eternity, that they will be destroyed in the mighty name of Jesus. I bless the name of the Lord concerning you. As you take this step, we start, we start seeing the manifestation of the glory of God upon your life in the mighty name of Jesus. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. My sister, God bless you. Please, look at that sister waving her hand. Kindly follow you. They will take some of your information and get back to us. All right? Then you join us to take the final prayers. God bless you as you do so in the name of Jesus. For the rest of us, please, as we clap our hands, let us all rise up and pray. Let us rise up, clap, clap. Let the clapping be for God. Let that clapping be for you, most high God. That as you put your priority in it, he will show forth for you in the mighty name of Jesus. Let us clap for him. Let us clap for the most high God. The one that matters most in our situation and circumstances. The one that will send help to you today in the mighty name of Jesus. For in Jesus' mighty name we are praying. So we are going to pray now. Say, Father, help me to seek more of your word and your righteousness from now on in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, help me to seek more of your word and your righteousness in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, help me to seek more of your word and your righteousness from today in the name of Jesus. For in Jesus' mighty name we are praying. You are going to pray again. Say, Father, from today... Give me more insight to set my priorities right on you in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, from today, give me more insight to set my priorities right on you in the mighty name of Jesus. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. You are going to pray again. Say, Father, let me seek the abundance of life in you and not in this world. Father, let me seek the abundance of life in you and not in this world in the name of Jesus. Let us pray. Say, Father... Let me seek the abundance of life in you and not in this world in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, Father, let me seek the abundance of life only in you and not in this world in the name of Jesus. Father, let me seek the abundance of life in you and not in this world in the mighty name of Jesus. We are going to pray again. Say, Father, give me the grace and the belief to be faithful to your word. Father, the grace and the belief to be faithful to your word. Grant unto me in the name of Jesus. Grant unto me in the name of Jesus. Father, give me the grace and the belief to be faithful to your word. Grant unto me this morning in the name of Jesus. Grant unto me, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. Father, give me the grace and the belief to be faithful to your word in the name of Jesus. For in Jesus' mighty name we are praying. Finally, you are going to pray. Say, Father, as I prosper in my body and being in health, let me prosper in my soul in the name of Jesus. Father, as I prosper in my body and being in health, let me prosper in my soul in the name of Jesus. Father, as I prosper in my body and being in health, let me prosper in my soul. Let me prosper that my soul will not be condemned. Father, as I prosper in my body, and being hurt, let me prosper in my soul in the name of Jesus. Father, let me prosper in my soul in the name of Jesus. Father, let me prosper in my soul as I prosper in my body and in health. Father, let me prosper in my soul. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Father, Lord, we thank you and we bless your name for your word that has gone forth this morning. Father, feed that word with your power in the name of Jesus. Fill it, Father Lord, with more insight for your children in the mighty name of Jesus. That through the word, every father do great and mighty things in their lives. 
in their business, in the mighty name of Jesus. For every mountain before them, Lord, let your word, let it destroy this point in the name of Jesus. For every valley that they find themselves, Lord, bring them out this morning in the name of Jesus. Let your word, let it create a new path for them in life in the mighty name of Jesus. Let your word, let it shine upon every works of their hands in the mighty name of Jesus. Let it shine upon their family. Let it shine upon their children. Let it shine upon their businesses in the mighty name of Jesus. For whatever problem they are going through, for whatever darkness, the enemy has used to surround them. Let your light, let it shine upon those darkness and those problems now in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, from today, as they put their priority on you, your word says that they should seek you first. As they seek you in righteousness, you confirm that every other thing that they need, you will add on to them. I pray that as they seek you this morning in righteousness, Lord, meet them at the point of their needs in the mighty name of Jesus. For whatever they have raised on to you this morning, that the answer in the mighty name of Jesus. Answer in the name of Jesus. Start a new thing in their life. It's the season of perfect jubilee. Perfect everything concerning their lives. Perfect everything concerning their health. Perfect everything concerning their finances. Perfect everything concerning their businesses. In the name of Jesus. In every area they are barren. Father, from today, they will be fruitful. In the mighty name of Jesus. From today, they will move forward. In the name of Jesus. From today, they will go higher. In the mighty name of Jesus. For in Jesus' mighty name we are pray. For in Jesus' mighty name we are pray. Let somebody shout hallelujah. If you have been blessed this morning, shout a believing hallelujah. Let's stretch forth our hands towards the Kimwale. God has used him to bless us this morning. Let's pray that God will bless him in return. Let's pray that God will water him in return. Virtue has gone out of him. Let's pray that the Lord will replenish every lost virtue. Let's go rebook every retaliating spirit from the pit of hell against him and against the entire family. Let's pray the anointing of God upon his head shall never run dry. Let's pray for him that the Lord will uphold him to the very end, that he will not fail God. In the name of Jesus, let's pray that on the last day, he will not be found wanting. Let's cover him and the entire house with the blood of Jesus. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. We have learned this morning that we should set our priorities right. We should set our priorities towards the things of God. And one of the points says we must set our priority. We must know the word. And another one says we must be the doers of the word. And this morning, we are going to put it into practice. As God commanded us in Malachi 3 from 8 to 10, he said we should bring our tithe into the storehouse. So it is time to, give, to pay our tithe. Praise the Lord. So if you are here this morning, you want to give your tithe, uh, I, will, I encourage you to please do it online. And if you have your cash, there is an envelope in front of you. Put, remove the tight envelope and dip in your tight there. For the benefit of those listening to us via the audio channel, the account um, to tri transfer your tights to is Zenith Bank account, 1017046337. I take that again, 1017046337, praise the Lord, shall we be on our feet as a covenant voices lead us in him, thank you.
our Father, we thank you. We bless your holy name for the privilege to pay our tithes. Father, we say thank you. Accept our thanks and praises in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, as your word says that you will rebook the vow from us. I pray for everyone that has paid their tithes, that you rebook every devourer in their lives, in their business, in the name of Jesus. Father, I cover them with the blood of Jesus. I pray that the remaining 90% will not be spent in the hospital. It will be used to the glory of your name in the mighty name of Jesus. My Lord and my God, as you also promised that you will open the windows of heaven. For as many that have paid their tithes, O Lord, confirm your word in their lives and open the windows of heaven and bless them tremendously in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lashant of this. Blessed be your holy name. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Praise the Lord. Praise Master Jesus. Praise, 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 praise. Praise, praise, until you stand up. Praise, 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 praise the Lord. I read Psalm 116, 12 to 14. It says, What shall I render to the Lord for all his benefit to me? What do you want to render? Your dance offering? your offering unto the Lord for everything he has done for you, for the benefit he has given to you. It's time to give God back his offering. Give God his offering by your dancing and by giving him the best. Please transfer your offering to the offering account Zenith Bank 10170463220 Zenith Bank account 10170463220. Even for people that are watching us online, please stand up from wherever you are and give God the best dance you can ever give. Unless you want to be watching your neighbor, but it is time to give God. What can you render than giving God the best in your offering? And in your dance of free. Choir will give us a lovely song. Let the living shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. How big is your God? Let me tell you.
Lord, we bless your name. Lord, we say thank you. Thank you because it can only be God. Thank you, oh Lord, for accepting our dance. Thank you for accepting our offering. Thank you, oh Lord, for breathing on our legs. The legs that we have used to dance, Lord, you will take us places in the name of Jesus. The legs will use it to possess our possession in the name of Jesus. Everywhere we we'll go, we'll be at the right place at the right time in the name of Jesus. We soak the offering in the blood of Jesus. Father, Lord, use it, O oh Lord, to further your work here on earth in the name of Jesus. All the people that have given, Father, Lord, they will never lack. You will continue to bless the work of their hands. Everywhere they lay their hands upon, they will prosper. And for people that are looking for how to come and give next time, Father, Lord, open the windows of heaven concerning them and bless them that they will have no room enough to come in the name of Jesus. Father, Lord, we will bless you. We say thank you, Lord, for answered prayers. Thank you, Lord, for our offerings. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. Are we happy to be in the presence of God today? It's testimony time. Testimony time. Okay, so the first three people to come out can quickly share their testimony. Let's take note of the rules for the testimony. No singing, no testimony of birthday or wedding anniversary or other routine things. No testimony on behalf of other people. No singing. Just go straight to the point and thank God for what he has done in your life. Praise the Lord. Five days ago, I was coming back from work. I and my friend, and then we wanted to cross the road to the other side, leading to the estate where we're going to pass through. All of a sudden, there's a bike coming from one way. We, my friend, didn't see the bike coming, and neither did I. Did I see the bike coming? So as my friend crossed, I can't even explain the experience. Then I wanted to cross my too because we took our time. We're not in a haste, and we noticed that cars were not coming from this other side. All of a sudden, I just saw one rider, just one delivery guy just hit me, you know, from nowhere. In fact, I've never experienced that kind of thing before. And I'm always this conscious person anytime I'm going anywhere. So all of a sudden, I just saw myself on the floor. I hit my forehead on the ground, and then I, I quickly stood up. I was so conscious of myself. I quickly stood up, and I just want to thank God for, you know, for sparing my life. There was no car coming by the other side. I, and it's not yet my time, you know, because I, I, I kept telling God, this is not what we agree. This is because when you know your, your place in God, there are some things that will not happen. But what I just want to say is that, God, I thank you for sparing my life. There is no other car coming from the other side. I'm healthy. I'm alive. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I want to thank this great God for last week's Sunday. It's just like a joke. I was just sitting down there, and all of a sudden, during the sermon, I started experiencing pain. I was like, this is not me, and I'm a type that can endure anything. I was enduring the pain. It became very severe that I had to force myself outside, and uh, Sister Florence and one other sister came to assist me. They gave me a pastor. I see if it's not me. I was like, God, what is this? I lied down there in the pavilion for some several minutes, and I said I want to start going home. So I will get more medical attention. As soon as I got into the car to go home, I just remembered that I have the anointing oil from the camp inside my bag. I just quickly took it and dipped it inside my mouth. I see it's like magic. You know, the pain just, just disappeared. I want to thank God that it's not small. It's looking like a joke. Some severe pains can land somebody in the mortuary. I want to give God the glory. I'm not taking it for granted. And also for taking me and my children every day to the shop on bike and bringing us home. I'm not taking it for granted. Father, I am grateful. Praise the Lord. 
Let's thank God for the testimonies. Let the testifiers please stand up as we pray. Let's begin to thank God for life, for saving the life of our sister. Thank God for healing our other sister. And for the miracle and the anointing of the Lord provided at the right time in her life. Let's begin to thank God for them. These are powerful testimonies. Let's not take them for granted. In Jesus' name. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the wonderful things you've done in the life of our sisters. We ask that you alone take all the glory in the name of Jesus. Things of testimonies will never cease in their life in the name of Jesus. Things of testimonies will never cease in our own lives in the name of Jesus. We also tap into the miracles of the mighty things you are doing. We shall be partakers also in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. For in Jesus' mighty and precious name, we have prayed. Praise the Lord. If you're excited to be in church this morning in this season of perfect jubilee, shout a big hallelujah. It's now time for us to welcome some very special persons here in our midst this morning. If this is your first time of worshiping with us in Lifegate Parish, we'll love you to rise to your feet. We want to welcome you. We want to share Christ's love with you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My brothers, my sisters, praise the Lord. You're welcome to Lifegate Parish, also known as the Convenance House. It's the Redeemed Christian Church of God. Our area pastor, Pastor Shegumbao, has a message for you, and it reads, Welcome home. We've been waiting for you. It's true because we believe that every person who comes into the circle of the special fellowship was sent by God himself. It is not by accident that we have the joy to express Christ's love to you with genuine heartfelt ones. We are eager to know you. We're excited to share with you the marvelous ways God is working in our church. It won't take you long to discover that this is truly a family rich in the relationships that matter most. Growing together, we worship, we serve, we laugh, we cry, we learn, and we reach out to our world with life-transforming truth. We reach out to you as well. Our doors are open. Our hearts are open too. If you've been thinking, praying, searching, and hoping for a place to belong, we say again, Welcome home. We're excited to have you here with us this morning. Our ushers will give you a card. Please fill in your details correctly so we can reach out to you and pray with you. Church, can we stretch forth our hands to our brothers and sisters and say something sweet into their life? Let's declare God's goodness over their life even as they have come. Let's pray that they will not go back the same. Father, the psalmist said in your word, that in the presence of the Lord, there is fullness of joy. Even as your children have gathered there this morning for the first time, we decree and declare over their lives that in every area they will begin to experience joy unspeakable in the name of Jesus. We cover them with the blood of Jesus. We pray as they have come, they will not return the same. Thank you, faithful Father, for in Jesus' most wonderful name we have prayed. Praise the Lord. Welcome to the Redeemed Christian Church of God Life Gate Parish. If this is your first time worshiping with us, we want to take a moment to say thank you and tell you just how excited we are that you are here. On Sundays, we have two services. The first service, Dew of Heaven, starts at 8 a.m. It is quick, direct, fresh, and powerful. The second service, Fountain of Glory, starts at 9.30 a.m. It is filled with abundance of worship, praise, prayer, and celebration. House Fellowship holds every Sunday by 5 p.m. Join us for a special time of prayers every morning on Zoom from Mondays to Fridays at 6 a.m. so as to have a blessed and fruitful day. On Wednesdays at 6 p.m., we have a night of praise, word of wonders. Do not forget to bring along your dancing shoes to praise the Lord. 
Our sisters in the house, praise the Lord. Every Thursday at 9 a.m., we have the Victorious Sisters Fellowship, where you get to laugh, cry, share, connect, and refute your fellow sisters with new brothers in the house. Men's Fellowship holds every third Sunday of the month, where we deliberate on issues that bothers men, network, and pray together for the success of our families and the church at the Boulevard immediately after the second service. Our World Fair Food Bank makes food packs available every Sunday at the end of the second service for anyone who truly cannot afford a meal. The medical team will be available after the second service to attend to your medical needs where you can check your blood pressure, sugar level and general health status. It's 100% free. Please take advantage of this. Family meetings, also known as Generation Reconnect, holds every two months on Sundays at the end of the second service. This consists of teenagers from ages 13 to 19, the next gen, also known as the Sorosuke generation from ages 20 to 39, the real ages from ages 40 to 59, and lastly, the counselors from ages 60 and above. Please endeavor to be there. You do not want to miss it. The best way to stay connected with us is by joining our WhatsApp platform, 081-66-526227, where you get to receive job openings, announcements, and many more. You can send us your testimonies, prayer requests, and suggestions through our church email at thelifegate at gmail.com. Also, by following us on our social media platforms on Facebook at RCCG LifeGate Parish, Instagram and YouTube at RCCG LifeGate, MixLR, Twitter at RCCG LG. You can also reach out and connect with our pastor himself on the social media platforms on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube at Pastor Shegun Bawo. Do have a wonderful day. Stay blessed. And remember, God loves you. Let's clap. We really want to clap for Jesus. He said that God loves you. The one that knows that God loves him, let him clap. Clap, clap, and clap much more and much more better. If you have been richly blessed this morning. Amen. God bless you. I pray that seasons of celebration will not cease in the name of Jesus. As you are clapping for God, people will clap for you this year. In the mighty name of Jesus. <laughs> Praise God. We want to thank God and bless his name. The service is coming to an end. But I have a t special task to do before we bring the service to a close. Um, we have a message sent to us from the national, from the national headquarters, uh, from Adadi in the Lord. And uh, one of the things we are going to do now is that we are going to have a special thanksgiving offering. The special thanksgiving offering is to mark the successful completion of the 70th year anniversary of the Redeemed Christian Church of God and the 40th convention of the RCCG that, con that concluded last week. It has been a great success, and uh, that day the Lord said we should join him in giving thanks and praises to the Most High God. So what we are going to do is that for the next five minutes, we are going to give thanks and praises unto him. I pray that the covenant voices will, they will go higher than what they did the, the other time. So for, for what we are going to do this, this morning is that if you are here and you want to give by cash, there are still some envelopes, uh, the seats that is in front of you, look at the pouch. If you don't see the right envelope, just call on the ushers and they give you the envelope for you to put in your cash for the task giving offering. Then if you are going to transfer, um, I will read the account number you are going to transfer to. It's still going to be the offering account of, the, of LifeGate Parish, Zenith Bank. The account number, I will read it out again, is 101-704-6320. I will do that again. Zenith Bank, LifeGate account, offering account, 101-704-6320. Now, what you are going to do is that in the process of sending uh, your money through uh, your platform to that account, you are going to give the right narration. And the narration you are going to give when you are transferring is that you just call it Convention Thanksgiving Offering. Convention Thanksgiving Offering so that we can separate it from today's offering. God bless you as you do so. So let us all rise up Hallelujah. and dance and bless the name of the Lord because he's going to perfect everything concerning our lives. Convener voices. Oh, oh,
shout hallelujah. God bless you. Let us pray. Let us pray. Our Lord and our Savior, just want to thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that we can come into your presence with a heart of appreciation and gratitude. For what you did, Lord, during the one-week conversion. Thank you, Lord, for all the testimonies. Thank you, Lord, for salvation of souls. Thank you, Lord, for deliverance. Thank you, Lord, for healings. Thank you, Lord, for powerful testimonies. Thank you, Lord, for blessings. Thank you, Lord, for renewal. Thank you, Lord, for transformation. Thank you, Lord, for turning around situation from bad to good. Father, Lord, we thank you. Thank you, Lord, for a new hope in heaven for so many of us. And thank you, Lord, for a new beginning. Thank you, Lord, for a season of jubilation. And thank you, Lord, for perfect jubilee. Father, Lord, we bless your name. Father, Lord, we say thank you. We appreciate you. Lord, you have given us the grace to do 70 years of redeem and 40 years of the conversion. I pray, Lord, that as you tarry, give us the grace to celebrate more in the name of Jesus. Grant us the grace to celebrate the 50 years of the conversion, the 60 years of the conversion, the 70 years of the conversion, the 80 years of the conversion, the 90 years of the conversion, and the 100 years of the conversion in the mighty name of Jesus. We will celebrate it in joy and blessings. In good health, shall we celebrate it in the name of Jesus. Father, Lord, we just thank you. Thank you, Lord, for all that you have done. Thank you, Lord, for greater things you will do. Father, Lord, we bless your name. Daddy, we honor you. We return all glory, all honor, all adoration unto thy name in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for the offering of your children this morning to show their appreciation unto you. Father, let it be accepted unto you in the mighty name of Jesus. For this that they have given, Lord, let there be more celebrations in their life in the name of Jesus. For that they have given this morning, Lord, perfect everything concerning their lives in the name of Jesus. Perfect their heads, Lord. Perfect their businesses. Perfect their children. Perfect their families. Perfect their marriage in the mighty name of Jesus. Wherever level you are taking them to, nothing will take them back in the name of Jesus. As they continue to set their eyes on you, the helper of the airplace, send help to your children in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, Lord, we just thank you. We bless, the name, we bless this offering in the name of God the Father, in the name of God the Son, in the name of God the Holy Spirit. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Let somebody shout hallelujah. You can quickly have your seat for the next few minutes to listen to the following or extra announcement. Once again, um, Pastor Shegumba, who our pastor, is not around. But surely, I can tell you that as the Lord starts, by this time next week, you'll be here with us in the mighty name of Jesus. So let's thank God for his life. He is praying for us. He's on short vacation, but like I said, by next week, we'll be back strongly renew the church transform in the name of jesus immediately after the second service as you are aware the medical team will be available to attend to your health issues um that will be at the level one so if you have any reason why you need to see them please go there it is free i pray that god will perfect everything concerning our health in the mighty name of jesus the welfare team too will be available to serve meals at the end of the second service. So if you are in need of a food, you don't have any food to eat this afternoon, please kindly go to the canteen. The welfare team will be there to um, attend to you. And I pray that beyond today, God will open a heaven for you and that in every area of your luck, it will arise for you in the name of Jesus. On Wednesday is our midweek service, the night of praise, word and wonders. By 6 p.m., we expect you all to be here to come and be part of the night of praise, the world and wonders. And I pray that as you come, you will manifest the signs and wonders and miracles in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. I said you will manifest his wonders in your life in the name of Jesus. Let sister in the house, let them shout hallelujah. The Victoria Sisters Fellowship, known as VSF, we hold this Thursday as usual by 9 a.m. And um, immediately after that will be the counseling. I join all our sisters to, to join them. And I pray that as you pray to the Almighty God, you will experience open doors in, a, in every area of your life in the mighty name of Jesus. 
Equally, the men in the house, let me hear you shout hallelujah. Let the men in the house shout hallelujah. Amen. I'm sure we are not ashamed to be men. And I pray that God will continue to give us the grace, the strength, and the power that we need to be men indeed in the mighty name of Jesus. From the, from, from the message shown during the, um, the, 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 what's it called, the video that was shown, the men will be having their meeting um, today. Today is the third Sunday of the month. So they'll be having their meeting immediately after the second service. I want to encourage our men to encourage the air school to do more, you know. So please, please, please support them. Attend the meeting they'll be having today. Is in preparation for their forthcoming men's week that has been stated for October. They need your help. They need your assistance. And I know that as you show up, you know, God will make use of you in that men's, um, men's fellowship. And God too will do great things in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. I said God will do great things in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Let us all rise up and pray. Let's bless the name of the Lord. Let's begin to thank God and appreciate him for what he has done in today's service. I believe that we all be richly blessed. Let's, let's stand up and pray. Covenant voices, you are great. Yes, you are. You are. You walked upon the sea. You raised the dead. You raised that everything written about our God is great. And my prayer is that he will do great things in your life this week, this month, this year, in the mighty name of Jesus. We are going to pray. But before we pray, for those of you that were not here for the first service, you know, the sermon was, he knows your name. And one of the prayer points that we take, I would like us to take it probably you are not particulars of that prayer. So we are going to pray. Say, Father. Say, Father. In every area, every shrine, every unholy altar, that they have deposited my names. Father, call out that name now in the mighty name of Jesus. In every shrine, anywhere, any unholy altar, that the enemies have deposited your name. God, call the name out now in the name of Jesus. Call out that name in the name of Jesus. He knows your name. So, Father, Every area that the enemy has deposited my name. Anywhere they have taken my name to. Any council they have taken my name to. Maybe for you, they have taken your name and they have dropped it in your place of organization that you will not get permission. Say, Father, call out my name now in the name of Jesus. Father, call out my name. In any place, they have dropped my name negatively. They have mentioned my name negatively. They have deposited my name. In any shrine, any unholy altar, Father, call it out now in the name of Jesus. Call it out in the name of Jesus. Call it out in the name of Jesus. Call it out in the name of Jesus. Call it out. Lazarus was dead, but Jesus called forth his name. He said, Lazarus, come out. Call on your name. If that name has its place in sickness, call it out now in the name of Jesus. If that place, your name, has been deposited for destruction this week. 
call out your name from those that are going to be destroyed. If that name has been marked for death, call out the name now in the name of Jesus. Father, call forth their names. Call forth my name, Father Love. From any unholy altar, from any shrine, from any council, Father, I call out my name now in the name of Jesus. I call out my name in the name of Jesus. Call out that name. He knows your name. So mention your name. Mention that name. Say, Father, you call out Lazarus from the death. Father, call out my name from sickness. Call out my name from destruction. Call out my name from accident. Call out my name wherever they are deposited it now. Call it out, Lord. Father, call my name out now in the name of Jesus. Father, call out my name, Father. Call out my name. Father, I call out my name, Olu Olefi for. Lord, in any area that they have deposited the Father, call out that name now. Call it out now in the name of Jesus. Call it out in the name of Jesus. Call it out in the name of Jesus. Call it out. Call it out in the name of Jesus. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. You know, the will of God will never lead you where the grace of God cannot keep you. And the power of God cannot use you. So you are going to pray, say, Father, let your grace and your power keep me in your path to eternal glory. Keep me in your path to eternal kingdom. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, let your grace and your power let it keep me in your path to eternal kingdom in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, let your grace and your power, let it keep me in your path to eternal kingdom in the name of Jesus. Let it keep me in your path to eternal glory in the name of Jesus. For in Jesus' mighty name we are prayed. Say, Father, no matter how far I have gone away from you, have mercy on me and redirect my step to you today in the name of Jesus. Father, no matter how far I have gone away from you, have mercy on me and redirect my step today in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, no matter how far I have gone away from you, have mercy on me, Lord. Redirect my steps today in the name of Jesus. Father, no matter how far I have gone away from you, have mercy and redirect my steps today in the name of Jesus. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Say, Father, in every area that I have set wrong priorities in life, redirect my priorities to your world in the mighty name of Jesus. We can show it on the screen. Father, in every area that I have set wrong priorities in life, redirect my priorities to your world in the name of Jesus. Father, in every area that I have set wrong priorities in life, redirect my priorities to your world in the name of Jesus. Redirect my priorities to your world today. Redirect my priorities to your world every day in the name of Jesus. Father, in every area that I have set wrong priorities in life, redirect my priorities to your world today in the name of Jesus. Father, redirect my priorities to your world in the name of Jesus. Redirect my priorities to your world in the name of Jesus. For in Jesus' mighty name we are praying. For in Jesus' mighty name we are praying. It's going to pray again. Say, Father, the grace to obey and abide by your word grant unto me in the name of Jesus. Grace to be dwell of the world beyond era of those words. The grace to be doer of your word from today, Lord, grant unto me in the name of Jesus. The grace to obey and abide by your word. Grant unto me in the name of Jesus. Grant unto me in the name of Jesus. Grant unto me in the name of Jesus. Father, Lord, the grace to obey and abide by your word. Grant unto me in the name of Jesus. Grant unto me in the name of Jesus. For in Jesus' mighty name we are praying. Finally, you are going to pray. Say, Father, I surrender all of my will for your will today in the name of Jesus. Father, I surrender all of my will for your will today in the name of Jesus. Father, I surrender all of my will for your will today 
in the name of Jesus. Father, I surrender all of my will for your will today in the name of Jesus. Father, I surrender all, all of my will for your will today in the name of Jesus. Father, I surrender, Lord, all of my will for your will today in the name of Jesus. For in Jesus' mighty name we are praying. Finally, you are going to pray your own personal prayer. We have different reasons why we are in church today. So commit your individual needs to him. The first sermon says he knows your name. So he knows your need. So commit your own personal needs into his hand. And he's here. He will answer you in the name of Jesus. The spirit of living God is here this morning. He's here to meet with you at the point of need. So pray. Commit your own personal needs into his hand. Our needs are different. Our needs are different. So commit it into God's hand. And my prayer is that he will surely meet with you at the point of your need this morning in the name of Jesus. Let's begin to round up our prayers. Let's begin to round up our prayers. He has heard you this morning. He will answer you. Meet with you at the point of your need. In the name of Jesus. For in Jesus' mighty name we are pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we just want to thank you. Thank you, Lord, for the only thing that you can do in our lives that no man can do. Thank you, Lord, for what you have done today. Thank you, Lord, Father, because you know our need. Thank you, Lord, because you have gone ahead of us to perfect everything concerning that name. Father, Lord, we bless your name. Daddy, we honor you. Thank you, Lord, for calling forth our names in every area that the enemies has deposited them this morning. Father, Lord, we thank you for deliverance. We thank you for blessings. We thank you for your word. We thank you for the power in the world. We thank you, Father, Lord, for what it is said to accomplish. And we know that you accomplish in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, we just thank you. Daddy, we acknowledge you. Thank you, Lord, for the first service. Thank you, Lord, for the Sunday school. And thank you, Lord, for the second service. Thank you, Lord, for our dance offering unto you. Father, Lord, let them be acceptable unto you in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, Lord, I pray that all that you have done in our midst this morning, it shall be permanent in the name of Jesus. The testimonies that we have shared, it shall be permanent in the name of Jesus. The new names that you have given us, that you call us with, it shall be permanent in the name of Jesus. In every area that we have been setting wrong priorities, and you have made us to know the right priorities. I pray that from today, as we set our priorities rightly in you, and as you have said that every other thing you had on to us, Father, every of our needs had on to us in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, beyond our own expectation, Daddy, bless us in the name of Jesus. As we continue to put our trust in you, we will not stumble. <laughs> I hope in you will not be caught short in the name of Jesus. In this new week, Father, as we go forth, do a new thing in our lives in the name of Jesus. Every manipulation and devices of the enemy concern our lives. Father, we come against it now in the name of Jesus. Every snare, every trap that the enemy has set this week, Father, let them be consumed by your fire in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, in our going out this week, Lord, Go with us in the name of Jesus. Be with us in the name of Jesus. Abide with us in the name of Jesus. Every of our goals and objectives for this week, grant us the grace to achieve them in the mighty name of Jesus. Bless the works of our hands in the mighty name of Jesus. Today, open a book of remembrance concerning us in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, Lord, let us come back as we tarry next week with testimonies in our lives in the name of Jesus. It's a season of jubilation. Father, perfect everything concerning us celebrations and jubilation in the name of Jesus. Father, Lord, we just thank you that we bless your name. As your children go forth this morning, go with them. Be with them. Abide with them. Let your presence, let it go with them. Let your power, let it go with them. Let your word, let it go with them. And let it abide with them in the name of Jesus. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Let us share the grace with the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us 
all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Lastly, convenient voices, let their beloved share amongst us. Let the beloved share amongst us. Let the Shalom.